Hey guys, how's it going? Russian Heat here once again with another useful video. In today's video, my goal is to show you how to set up Counter-Strike uh, from very beginning, how to optimize Windows for the best possible performance in the game, and show you all the areas uh, in Windows settings and in Counter-Strike and NVIDIA settings, where to click and what to change to get the most out of your setup and most out of your game. Before I begin, I just want to give a quick disclaimer that every setup is slightly different and what works for me might not work for you. So please change the setting, test, test, and test. Change one setting, run a benchmark a couple times. If you see an improvement, good, keep it that way. So the goal of this video is to show you where to go and where to click and how to do things. All right, guys. So step one, once you formatted your computer and you got into Windows, the first thing you want to do, you want to run every single possible update. Uh, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. You click on the start menu, you're going to go to settings and you're going to go to update and security. Something like this should prompt. Make sure you refresh and install until no more updates are available. Once the Windows has been installed, the next thing you want to do is install uh, your either NVIDIA or AMD drivers. Go on the NVIDIA or AMD website, click on the driver drop down menu, select the video card that you have, search, download, and install. Pretty self explanatory. Right after this, we're going to go on to Motherboard Manufacturer website and check if you need to do any updates there. So in this case, I have this motherboard right here, MSI Z390 Godlike. I'm gonna go ahead and type that in Google, click on the page for the motherboard. Then I'm gonna go to support section on MSI website and I'm gonna look through what should I update. First thing I'm looking at is BIOS. And the rule about BIOS is do not fix unless it's broken. If there's a feature or a major security update that needs to be installed, go ahead and update the BIOS. But if it's working fine, your overclock is stable. If you're overclocking, you have no security vulnerabilities. Uh, there are no crazy features that are added that you would like to use, like for example, on this one right here. And keep the BIOS the way it is. Do not update it. With Intel latest BIOS updates, when it mentions updated microcode and TPM functions in a couple of the latest ones from uh, almost a year old, those updates are actually lowering your performance noticeably. So please, once you install the BIOS, run the benchmark and test it. See what works for you. Uh, in my particular case, I'm running this version of the BIOS because that's the best one I could find that works for me. Once you're done with the BIOS, let's move on to the next thing as your uh, would be your drivers. Once you click on a driver, page select your operating system and start installing one by one and looking what's needed generally speaking you want to install most of those drivers because there is a use for them in one way or another uh, what i do for mine i install my usb 3.0 drivers i install my lan drivers bluetooth drivers for my other peripherals and very important driver set to set up is your chipset intel chipset drivers so go ahead, download that latest version. Rapid storage technology. Another one is for your controller, for your storage controller driver. Go ahead and install that. Here's another big one. Your sound drivers. A lot of people underestimate this. To keep me, keeping this up to date is very important, I think. And I found general performance improvements every time I update to the latest version of the driver. So it's one of the drivers I check quite frequently on the page and make sure it's up to date. The other two pages, a manual, if you want to read about your motherboard, do that. It's not really a necessity. Utilities, that's something extra. Generally, when you install a bunch of crap in your computer, it's going to slow it down in one way or another unless you have a beast. So just kind of browse and see, see what you like. One thing that you want to turn off as well would be focus assist. Click on a Windows icon, type in focus assist, and turn it off. This lowers your FPS when pop-up comes up in-game. Alright guys, next we're going to fix our mouse settings. Uh, I do recommend looking at your 
manufacturer mouse driver, installing the latest one. And in my particular case, I have a wireless G Pro mouse, and I'm using 800 DPI setting for my default setting and the only setting I use. Uh, generally speaking, you don't want to go too high on a DPI because your sensitivity is going to get outrageous and you have to counter it in game. But you also don't want to get too low. So I do not recommend 400 DPI setting because your mouse actually is a little bit more precise if you use the 800 DPI setting. There's a couple YouTube videos from other people that explain the reason why and how to test it to prove it. So please highly recommend sticking either to 800 or 1600 DPI. So once you do that, let me go ahead and put this back onto onboard mode so the software does not control it. Windows mouse settings, you just keep it if you want to keep it default. But once again, let's go to mouse settings. Uh, additional mouse options. I'm going to click on to pointer options. And when you install Windows, this is enabled by default. I recommend disabling gives you true one to one sensitivity when you swing your mouse around. Go ahead and close that. Next thing would be power settings. So you're going to click right here, type in power settings in a search bar, use this, set your screen time, out time, sleep time. I recommend using never. You want to turn off your computer when you don't use it, or the screen goes to sleep every 15 minutes so you don't drain too much power. This is very important. A lot of people don't know this, and that needs to be set to high performance. If you don't do it, you can lose major FPS in game, especially in older games like Counter Strike, since they're they're not optimized really well. Surprisingly, I know. Okay, so once you have all those latest drivers installed, next thing I highly recommend enabling hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Right click on your desktop. Go to display settings, scroll all the way down. It's, uh, which one is it? Oh, it's this one right here on the bottom. Whoops. Graphic settings. Hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. That's a new feature that was added in a Windows 2004 version, Windows 10 2004 uh, and up with the latest NVIDIA drivers. And you also have to have a qualifying graphics card like Turin, Pascal, or the latest Ampre graphics card. So you're 10,000, 2,000, uh, I'm sorry, 10,000, 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000 series NVIDIA cards. Once you enable it, it's going to ask you to restart the computer. And what it does, that reduces your CPU load just a tiny bit by allowing tasks, graphics tasks, to be scheduled on a GPU itself. There's a blog on a Microsoft website that talks a little more about it and technic technicalities of this. A little bit of out of order, but next thing, let's go and fix your NVIDIA settings. Right click on your desktop, go to NVIDIA control panel, wait till that loads. Once you have that, start from the top, go to manage 3D settings. Set this one in the same way I have it, because I think it's the best for global settings only. So what I generally change it here, I change my monitor technology to fixed refresh rate because I do run at 240 hertz and I'm waiting for my 360 hertz monitor to arrive, should be any day. Uh, I keep everything default and I turn off the vertical sync. And then I have program specific settings uh, just for Counter-Strike itself. So pick Counter-Strike from right here. For some reason it doesn't detect it, which is shoot you can add by pressing, excuse me, you can add by pressing add button and finding it here uh, in the list or you can browse directly to exe file and change it to this. You can just follow my guide, pause it at any time. What I change here, I prefer maximum performance for power management, and I flip this to high performance and it changes this and this. And I force VSync off once again, make sure it's not on. You have nothing to lose by doing this, only to gain. You can once again mess around with the settings, see which ones work best for you. But this is, I highly recommend keeping it this and only this way. You can talk to many other people and professional players. 99% of them either do this or they just go right here and then they force this to high performance just like that and they hit apply. Either, either way will work. Okay, the next thing we want to look at is the desktop color settings. Click on adjust desktop color settings. You can change that 
if you like it, there's no performance uh, difference. If you do or if you don't, I like to keep it on default. I've seen some people adjust contrast and gamma a little bit. What I do recommend highly is changing your digital vibrance. Set it between 70 and 100%. And that will allow you to see enemies a little bit easier. Next setting would be adjust desktop screen position. And that setting will allow you to do stretched resolution. I do recommend playing on a stretched resolution because it makes the models appear a little bit bigger and easier to see. So to do that, you would choose your default monitor, which in my case is the older 240Hz Alienware monitor. Uh, one of the better ones I ever used personally. Uh, you're going to select the full screen, perform scaling and GPU, and check box right over here. Hit apply, and you should be good to go. Don't mess with any other settings. You don't want to use G-Sync for FPS gaming. Maybe for other types of games, yes, but for competitive FPS, don't ever use those. Not for Valorant, not for CSGO. Next thing we're going to look at are, would be the sound settings. So go to Control Panel, tap in Control Panel and Start Bar. Click on Sound. And take a look at the settings that you have here. Optimize it to your preference. I like to keep mine on default because my CPU can afford it and I play other games other than Counter-Strike and listen to music with headphones. They can actually support this output. Uh, and if you don't do that, just play Counter-Strike, you need to change everything to the DVD quality. You're going to squeeze a lot of FPS out of it this way. And Source Engine does not render anything past the DVD quality. I actually believe it's CD quality, to be honest. You guys might want to check me on that. I keep on a DVD, you're going to get a ton of FPS boost by doing it that way. Both for sound and for your microphone. So I actually keep it, I think, on DVD on this one. Yep, for my default mic. Okay, so you, once you get all of this done, the next thing is we're going to look at uh, folder explore options. So once again, control panel, you're going to go to the control panel to start menu, file explore options. We will click on view and switch it from here to here to show hidden files and folders and drives. And I'll show you in a second why. And you want to uncheck this hide extensions for known file types. Once you hit apply, it's going to do something that will allow you to see extensions in your folder. And it's going to come really useful when we get to setting up your auto, auto exec.cfg. To set up your auto exec CFG, you need to get in the kind of strike folder. So path to the Counter-Strike folder is this right here. It's going to be in your program files, default path, Steam, Steam apps, common Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Once you get inside the folder, double click on CSGO, CFG. And once you have the folder options enabled, it's going to show you uh, multiple files. And you want to set, set one up and call it autoexec.cfg. And inside of the file, you're going to put all your settings that will be memorized when you switch in between different computers. And whenever you go to LAN, whenever the fucking COVID is over. And I will paste my settings. Those are the best settings by far. Most optimal settings for Counter-Strike. I will post them in a video description. So feel free to use them. Uh, give me feedback in the comments. Uh, I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to do Counter-Strike launch options. Double click right here. This game fucking blows. Uh, right click on your Counter Strike icon, go to properties. You're gonna go to set launch options, and you're gonna put only these two launch options. Do not mess with launch options. Everything in Counter Strike runs well enough on your system, I promise you. Tick rate 128 allows you to create local 128 tick servers to practice your aimbots or run your FPS, FPS benchmarks, and no vid removes the startup video. Those are the only settings you need to do. Do not do this. Minus high, don't do anything. Matt. Uh, Q mode or something like that to everything it should else should be default. Okay. All right, guys. Well, this concludes my quick little tutorial on how to set up your Windows to right before you launch Counter Strike. Please subscribe if you like the video and leave me feedback in the comments. I would like to make my content better and I cannot make it better unless you tell me what I'm doing right or what I'm doing wrong. Thank you very much for watching guys. Happy fragging.